First off, getting into modify 1.1, here are the overview release notes. Release notes. If you see what's new, uh, the big one is going to be supports model sharing in countries outside of China, as well as model sharing function on mobile devices. So now in North America, uh, you're going to be able to share your models on modify. You get 60 gigabytes of storage, and then you're going to, we'll show you in a minute, how to be able to send a simple URL and have clients be able to look at your 3D models of Terra. Uh, we do also have a new fill selection tool and a new downward flattening. Uh, we also have updated some texture mapping uh, and texture repair that we'll walk through as well. So the new selection mode is called a penetrate. Uh, this is essentially looking for when we are trying to select a part of the model, uh, if we're going to only be selecting the part that we can view, or if it's going to be selecting any part of the 3D model that's within our polygon. So if we were looking at a facade, you can see the photos here, and we have the fill selection, that's what we had previously uh, on just on modify 1.0. So you select the area that you want to highlight. Uh, and if you have it on fill, it's not going to be selecting anything behind the 3D model because it's only filling what we can visually see. If you have penetrate, it will also select parts of the models that we can't see from our perspective when we're viewing that. So it's going to not just select the facade, but also select, since we're viewing it a bit at an angle, you can see that it's also grabbing the 3D model mesh that's a part of the polygon, but we can't see on screen because it's on the other side of the model. So a new penetrate selection, just being able to flatten and or clean up your models quite a bit quicker. We also have some new settings when it comes to surface flattening. Uh, before it was, you would just select an area and hit flatten and we would give a best estimation based off of the outside boundary as well as some uh, basically just the outside boundary so we would understand how to fill in that hole but we knew that customers wanted that to be uh, something that's not as just generate and that's what you get something that's a little bit more customized so with that we have the new custom uh, flatten tool so you can see that when you select the uh, custom flattening, it uh, calculates the flattening based on the height uh, around the wireframe. We now have the downward flatten to lowest. So if you're looking to flatten the entire mesh that you have selected to the elevation of the lowest point that you've already selected, it's basically on this bunker going to completely take off the top of it because it's a rounded, a rounded pile and it's flattening to the very edge, which is going to be the lowest. And you can see uh, areas that if, and if we flip this 3D model around, you would see it's a pretty hard wall just because we didn't select that area all the way to the edge uh, and it's flattening all the way down to the bottom. We also have a downward flatten to custom. So you can type in a specific number um, within meters, and then you can adjust that up or down. So if you select a plane and you want to adjust it to the highest, or if you want to adjust it up a couple feet, you're going to be able to type in that number and it's going to flatten the mesh to whatever you correspond it to. So a little bit more customization when it does come to flattening, something that I've <clears throat> found valuable when it comes to parking lots, uh, things that you're just roads looking to completely flatten it out, but at the same time, you want more customization of what that flattening does. And then the big one, the one that I'm excited about for 1.1, that is the ability of sharing that three model. So process models, You'll, the workflow would essentially be you capture using uh, Pilot2 and your DJI drone. You would then process your data in Terra using our photogrammetry engine. You'd import that into Modify with a, click with a simple click of a button. And then 
it's going to, you will then be able to clean your model. So you can remove floaters, you can fix your water surface, you're going to be able to flatten meshes and repair textures. And then from there, when you're ready to share that cleaned model, you can share that via a URL or a QR code. So if you go ahead and share or use your phone and scan the QR code that you see on screen, you should be able to pull up a viewer. Uh, or if you, I believe you can also try to pull that up on web, but you're going to notice we have both mobile versions and web versions. So you can view insanely high texture detail all mobily. Uh, we you also as a DJI modify if you make the purchase it you get an available cloud storage space of 60 gigabytes that is just a bank of 60 so if you if you delete a mesh or a model that you have uploaded and shared then whatever size that is will go back towards your account so if you start with 60 and you upload five 10 gigabyte meshes and models, you will then have 10, but if you delete one, you would get back up to 20, essentially. So it's that 60 just standing. Uh, we also have a validity period of 90 days. So the link in the QR code will last for that long. If it needs to be longer, you can always go back in after the 90 days and regenerate a new URL or a new code and extend that again for another 90. The data servers are located in the United States on AWS, so Amazon servers. We also have a new Modify project export and import. If you are looking to take a model that you have processed on one computer and import that and view it on another computer, if they have Modify, you're going to be able to do that. And you can then keep editing if you want to. So it's a DMEP file that you're going to export out. And then when you, when you export it, it gives you a zipped folder uh with the project or the dmap file in it um and then you'll unzip the file and then just double click on the project you'll want to keep everything within a symbol within a same folder there um, but then when you open up the project dmap or if you import it in then you're going to uh, select that file uh, also notes if you import in the undistorted images if you don't do that you won't be able to utilize like the fill hold tool when you do that there's no there's not going to be any texture it's just going to be gray because uh, there's no raw photos to help you fill in that texture repair side also the import and export are supported on 1.1 so if you are looking to import it into modify that you already have that would need to be upgraded from 1.0 to 1.1 We also have new optimized texture generation. We found just between 1.0 and 1.1, there were multiple times where we simply just didn't generate a texture. You can see at the very top, when we flatten that out, it's basically just gray. And now we're actually utilizing some of the map data as well as the raw photo data to better fill in that texture, gen text generate that texture. We also have seen significant improvements on hole filling and generating that texture in. You can see we kind of have a weird texture underneath the DJI Sky City, one of the uh, buildings there. And with hole filling 1.1, we have that greatly improved as well as trying to uh, remove vehicles from parking lots, generating a better texture to cut out that vehicle. So a lot of improvements when it comes to texture repair.